Hello everyone, I'm Julie and in today's video we are talking about the 7 best interior design ideas for small houses with a low budget. We all want our spaces to feel like the ultimate sanctuary, a place for us to relax and unwind, a place for us to be inspired by and comforted in. We want to make the most of what we have without spending a whole lot of money to do so. The goal of today's video is to share simple interior design ideas that you can implement today in your small space. What I hope to show you is how the power of interior design can change your life no matter what your budget or style. Trust me when I tell you that size does not matter, especially when it comes to interior design. So I know what it's like to try to make the most of your space, big or small, when you wanna do so much to make it yours. Using the same tips that I would provide for my affluent clients in their like 6,000 square foot mansions, as I would tell my starving artist student, 20 something younger self, here are the seven best interior design ideas to make the most of your small space. Before embarking on any type of interior design, whether or not you have a small space or a large one, my first tip is always, always the same. Purge, declutter, donate, and edit exactly in that order. The Great Purge always starts with taking full inventory of everything that you have in your home. I like to start with the room that I use most in the home, or at least the one that has the most clutter. Sometimes this is your bedroom, it could be your closet, it could be a bathroom. If you're starting in your closet, a good rule of thumb is to remove all of the items in your closet that you haven't worn for over a year. I live in Southern California, we don't really have seasonal weather. I kind of wear the same thing year round and there's a lot of layers that are involved. So my closet actually has to have ample room for me to display everything that I want to see and wear on the daily. Decluttering has everything to do with kind of cleaning off surfaces. If you're in the bathroom, you want to declutter your bathroom countertop, maybe your makeup vanity area. You want to get rid of items that you no longer use, items that are past its expiration date. Remember that makeup and toiletries do expire. You might have been hanging on to like an old face cream from like years back. It could be stuffed all the way in the back of your bathroom cabinet and you totally forgot about it. So purging and decluttering is a really great way for you to assess your needs to make room for the things that matter most. I purge and declutter my home on a regular basis. I am not a minimalist by any means. You know me, I'm a maximalist. But ever since having two kids, their toys have kind of exploded all over the house. Every single weekend, I feel like I'm constantly trying to like purge and declutter their toys and their personal belongings. And I feel like the mountain just kind of adds up, which makes me want to live more minimally in my space. I really make it a point to travel through my home and the minute I see something I know we're not going to use anymore, I begin to put it in a donation pile or I'll have like a donation box that I'm ready to fill up from room to room. I use a donation service called Vietnam Veterans Association and it's a really great organization because they actually just come and pick up my boxes that I need donated. I'll go online and I'll schedule these pickups. I love to do this because not only does it help me purge and declutter my space, it really makes me feel good because I know that I'm donating it to a nonprofit organization that I support. How do you offload your unwanted goods? Do you use a donation service like I do? Do you pack it up in boxes and deliver it yourself? I would love to know in the comments below. Finally, after you've purged, decluttered, and donated these items, it's time for you to edit. What does editing your space mean? I love to step back and take a really good look at my room. Sometimes I'll bust out my camera and I'll take a picture and I kind of look at the picture and if there's a corner that feels a little bit too heavy or an area where I feel like I could remove some decorative items from a surface just for the room to breathe. It gives me some negative space to look at. That's exactly how the editing process should go. While I love to be surrounded by all of my favorite things in my home, I also know that editing is really key. It gives those really special pieces a chance to be recognized and some of the pieces that are not so special could be corralled into a more significant, important gallery of some sorts. This gallery could be filled with frames that are installed right on a wall. The gallery could also be a collection of your favorite trinkets that you style in a way that makes it feel a little bit more complete and a little bit more important. The next best interior design idea for a small house with a low budget which really doesn't require any budget at all, is to rearrange your furniture. I call this the no spend challenge. Let's start with your living room. Your living room might have three key pieces of furniture in there. It could be a sofa, a coffee table, and a lounge chair. 
Think about rearranging the sofa, maybe flanking it on an adjacent wall or even an opposite corner of where it's sitting now. You'd be surprised at how you open up the space or even try a configuration that you never even thought of before. Maybe try relocating that lounge chair to the corner of your bedroom. While you're in the bedroom, let's take a good hard look at where your bed is. Is your headboard situated in the command position according to the principles of feng shui? The command position dictates that when you're seated in your bed or you're kind of lying in bed, you could see the door. It really just means that you are in command Man, you want to be able to see who's coming in and out of that room without having your feet be pointed directly in front of the door. That's considered a coffin position, the death position, and we don't want that in feng shui. If you want a refresher on bedroom feng shui taboos, do's and don'ts, definitely check out that video. I'll link it for you here. But if your bed is already in the optimum position, maybe you want to scooch it further away from the walls just so that you have enough room to kind of make your bed every single day. Maybe you want to change the orientation of your dresser. If it's on the wall that is right next to your bed, try placing it against the wall that's opposite the foot of your bed and you can also do the same with your desk or a little work area that's what you currently have in your bedroom you may not be able to rearrange all of the furniture in your dining area, but you might be able to rethink where you work from home. If you're currently using your dining table as your work from home office situation, try using the living room instead. You'd really be surprised by how much more alive your space feels just by rearranging your furniture. And like I said, this is a no spend challenge. So challenge yourself to not spend a single dime and kind of rearrange some of the big furniture pieces that you have in your home right now. This next interior design idea I absolutely love and it's probably the one that I give the most often because it's so easy to do. You could do it right now, especially after you rearrange your furniture. Now it's time for you to restyle the most used room in the home. Oftentimes this means the living room because it's probably the first room that you enter in once you walk into your home. Restyling the living room doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You just want to clear all of your shelves, all of the surfaces. If you have a bookshelf, like seriously, do this with me now. You want to remove every single book from the shelves, all of your decorative items, all of the books. If you have additional surfaces in the home, let's say a coffee table, a console, the fireplace mantle, I kind of want you to pull all of the items off of your walls, off of the surfaces and corral them in just one specific area. Once the room has a lot less decor and decoration, you're almost coming back at this space with an editor's eye, right? You want to really refine the look. Think, how do you want to recreate this vignette? Where's the focal point? What is the dialogue that you want all of these decorative items to have with each other? Once you restyle your space, you want to use the rule of thirds in design. The rule of thirds really just means you want to group items in odd numbers. Threes, fives, sevens. You want to mix and match material, something high, something low, something big, something small, something really organic, like bringing the outdoors in with fresh greenery, fresh flowers. You don't have to buy anything at all, okay? Remember that we love to forage right in our own backyards. If you live in an apartment, there's probably plants aplenty. You can kind of go out there and snip a little plant. I don't even know if they allow you to do that, but if they, do they allow you to do that in a Apartments? Can you go out and just kind of cut off a plant? Could. Okay. <laughs> If your neighborhood allows you to do that, that's awesome. If they don't allow you to do that, I would kind of cut off something that's overgrown or kind of growing on the underside of a bush. I don't think anyone's going to notice, but you will notice once you bring all of this fresh new energy into your space. The next best interior design idea for a small house with a low budget is to decant exposed products. This means decanting toiletries in the bathroom. You can decant kitchen products in the kitchen, pretty much anything that you have out on display or you're using as decorative purposes you want to put into a really nice clean bottle. In the kitchen, I already have so many things littering my countertops. I just want things to look like really clean and really organized. This also means decanting my Dawn Platinum soap from its like huge Costco bottle into like a really beautiful glass amber bottle that I kind of just tuck right into my sink. I like my everyday products to be like really discreet. I don't like a whole lot of plastic bottles and graphics and labels kind of littering my countertops. So the minute that you decant all of these items that you buy at a big box store into nondescript containers, they just look so much more elevated as a result. Again, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on these containers. I love to purchase these containers at my local dollar store. Daiso has really great options. Everything's under like a dollar and 50 cents. And of course, Amazon is chock filled with organizational products and storage solutions that I absolutely love. Just take another look at your bathroom counter. If you have like 50 different bottles on there that all look different, they're all different colors, they all have different labels versus decanting all of these bottles into the same matching set. Now what you've done is you've eliminated the visual clutter. The clutter is still there. It's just in decanted bottles that all look the same versus something that's kind of all over the place. 
the next best interior design idea for small houses with a low budget. You're gonna have to spend a little bit of money on this, but I promise you the benefit far outweighs the cost. It is to add a table lamp. This is such an easy solution to brighten up dark corners of the home or even add just a little bit of a moody ambiance to a corner that you never even thought of. You can do this with a really beautiful table lamp. You can also add in a floor lamp if you're lacking a little bit of surface space. Adding a lamp is the easiest way for you to change the entire mood of a room. Some of my favorite lamps that I have in my home were thrifted or secondhand. I have a pair of really beautiful vintage Murano glass lamps that I won from a giveaway. These lamps used to sit in my office, which is now my girl's room. And while I did have this gold line lampshade that I was using for the lamps before, I could also switch out the lampshade for an entirely different look. So even if you already have a lamp or a floor lamp in your house, but you kind of want to change up the vibe, think about changing up the lampshade for a totally new look. If you want to add a lamp or a lampshade, but you don't have a plug nearby, I also have a really great video on no outlets, no problem. I share my favorite ways to light up a home without any hard wiring required. I found an assortment of really amazing rechargeable light bulbs on Amazon. I'll link them all for you in the description box below. So if you're living in a rental where you can't really add any outlets or if you have a space in your room that's like far away from a plug, think about using a rechargeable light bulb instead. A lot of these light bulbs have rechargeable ports that you can literally just charge with a USB cable. So simple, so efficient. There's really no reason for you not to add a light into your home right now. The next best interior design ideas for small houses with a low budget is to buy what you love and only buy that. This tip I know could be really subjective, right? How do you know what you love? I know that seems like a really simple question, but it's really loaded because it almost forces you to make decisions based on the things that you have an affinity towards. If you have a color that you love, it's really easy to buy something in that color because you know you love it, right? If you're watching this channel, you might be tuning in because you want interior design tips. You might be tuning in because you don't want to make a a common design mistake that most people make and spend even more money. But a really huge reason of why I wanted to make this design channel is because I'm trying to get you to figure out what you love in your home and kind of do more of that. A lot of it has to do with assessing your personal needs, the things that you need for your home and your family to function. But not only that, let's say you've got the function down. Now, how do we look for items that we love in a color, a shape, a form that follows the function that we need? If you're going out shopping and you spotted a really beautiful pillow that you loved. The pillow has these fringes and these tassels that really vibe with your kind of grand millennial aesthetic. You don't really know where you're going to put it. All you know is that you love it. I promise you, once you get back into your house, there's going to be so many places for you to decorate this pillow with. It could be your bed. It could be the accent chair that's in your living room. It could even be the dining room chair or even that little lounge chair in your tiny patio. If you love the item, you will make it work no matter what. Here's another way for you to discern if you actually love something or if you don't. Amazon is like a shopper's dream. If you think it, you just type it in the search bar and then voila, like 50,000 different variations of the exact same item pop up. So what I do is I will fill the cart to my heart's content. I buy this, buy that. Oh sure, do I need five of these? Yes, it's on sale, I'm gonna throw it in there. But the trick is you don't check out right away. I'll leave all of my items there in the cart and by the end of the week, if I still remember it, I'll go ahead and I'll buy it. And if I didn't remember it, then all of a sudden, Hey, guess what? I didn't really need it. I don't really love it. I'm going to leave you with another shopping mantra that I swear by. I told my girlfriends this and I thought it was crazy, but now every time they go out shopping, they always think of me. <gasps> this is what I tell myself when I go out shopping, okay? If I see like a really beautiful item that's still sitting on the rack, I ask myself, am I going to die if I don't have it? Chances are, I'm not gonna die. Who's gonna die without getting like a brand new sweater? But if I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die if I, if I don't have this item, then yes, I'm going to buy it. And that is how you know when you absolutely love something. Do you have a mantra that you swear by to limit your overspending? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. If you love it, you will make it work no matter how often you move, no matter how much bigger your next space is. I want to show you my former studio apartment. Remember that 700 square foot of space that I was living in when I was a student? It is crazy. I mean, clearly, I tell you, I love my stuff. It is filled to the brim with stuff. 
It looks so cluttered, it looks so crazy, but I wanted to point out some of the items that have made it from move to move, particularly these Ikea Calyx bookshelves. I had these two massive bookshelves that were lining my walls in the studio apartment, and here they are again. You can see them in my living room. I use one on like the adult side of the living room where I added all of my favorite decor books and interior design magazines. And on the opposite side is my kids' play area. I love how this Calyx bookshelf has just so many functional cubbies. I can divide it all up. I can stuff so many things in here. The next item is my brass Regency coffee table. This coffee table I scored on Craigslist for just $50. I remember when I was working for Kelly Wurstler, she had found two of these vintage coffee tables that she used in her space and I was so inspired and so happy that I found an exact dupe of it, which I still have in my home today. And the last item on today's list of the seven best interior design ideas for small houses with low budgets is to get personal. This is a segment where I teach you how to tell your story with furniture and your personal belongings. How do we display our personal hobbies and our interests? We have so many different layers to us. You decide on the layers that you want to share with the world or the layers that you want to personalize in your space. For me, I don't have a whole lot of storage space in my home and I'm okay with that. I am someone who loves to live surrounded by my things. As I travel from room to room in the home, I can tell you exactly when I found this really beautiful frame that's lining my wall. I can even talk you through the backstory of a single image that I had photographed on vacation and I blew up to fill in this frame. I don't hide anything in my home. The headdress that I wore on my wedding day during the tea ceremony is still sitting on a bookshelf right in the middle of my dining room. Even though I personally design according to the principles of feng shui, I have an area in the east sector of my home that's filled with a lot of green, a lot of plants, a lot of browns. You want to decorate your home with the colors that you're inspired by. The past patterns you love, the prints you favor. Think about sprinkling these items that tell your story everywhere in the home. I think the easiest way for you to personalize a space is with color because color has a visual impact that really resonates inside your core. The next time you're out shopping for a big ticket furniture item like a brand new sofa or new dining chairs, think about the colors that you love. If you have a small space or you're only working with let's say your own private personal bedroom, think of the interests that inspire you. It could be pop culture, it could be your favorite artist. It could be all of these little collectible trinkets that you love to put on display. Think about a way for you to share your story through the way that you rearrange your furniture to the manner in which you display all of your collectible items. I love it when guests walk into my home and they kind of survey the land and they tell me, oh my gosh, I remember when you got that from so-and-so vacation or oh my gosh, I remember when you wore that to da-da-da event. I love that my home tells my story and that guests actually feel connected to me and my home the minute that they walk in the space. Even though my husband isn't really big on design, I really make sure that I have some of his favorite items on display as well. Alongside my design books in the living room, I have all of his cookbooks as well. They were kind of relegated to a corner in his office and I found that the spines were so beautiful. And I thought, you know, why are we hiding it in your office? Why don't we put it out on display so that when we do have guests and they're interested in like different cuisines or like culinary excursions, they can kind of thumb through these books whether or not they love design design or food and culture. If you love to paint and you're an artist, why not scatter all of your collections of prints all throughout the house? You can have like a really beautiful statement piece behind the toilet, in the bathroom. I mean, how unexpected, but imagine the wow factor. You can have your own photography or portraits lining the hallway, maybe smack dab in the middle of your kitchen. Think about all the wonderful ways that you can share more of your story and put your life on display. That's it for today's video. I hope you got some really great tips on the seven best interior design ideas for small houses with a low budget. If you're enjoying my channel, please give this video a like, a comment, and subscribe. Comment below and let me know. How can you share more of your story in your home right now? What's the easiest way for you to refresh your home without spending any money at all? If you love this video and you want more tips for small spaces, definitely check out my small spaces playlist. I have over 10 episodes that details exactly what you need for small spaces from space planning to DIY decorative items. But if you're ready to take the plunge and invest in your small space, you definitely wanna check out this video that I'll link for you here below. It's the top 10 furniture pieces you need for small spaces, so you'll definitely wanna check that out. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one. Give it a really quick queen. Give it a really quick queen. Clean. Give it a really quick, click, click, quick cleaning. Give it a really quick cleaning.